people were talking about them trying to rekindle their relationship. And it was because of all the stalking and everything that was going on with him and her that she says, he's never gonna leave me alone. I am never gonna get rid of him. I may as well go back to him. Those were her words to me. She moved to Bundy because she got a settlement. She got her settlement and she was able to buy a place. And she wanted to pay cash for it because she wanted to own it and not have to worry. And so that was her, that was everything she wanted. She had a, a nest for her two children. When I saw it, it was beautiful. And there was a room inside the house. And I said, I, I can't live in the same house. I don't want to be in the same house. First of all, I just didn't feel right about it. And then I said, no, I'll find a place. OJ heard that, and at that time they were friends again, and said, you can move into my house. Nicole was very upset and said I was, I'd been manipulated by OJ. They were still dating when they were living separately, which was very awkward. And she knew in her heart that she didn't want to be controlled, and she knew that he was controlling her. As I knew her in those times, she became more of herself and had more of a voice. And so the more of a voice she had, of course, the more he would be upset. He had turned her into the perfect wife, and that's what he expected out of her. I knew she had reconciled with OJ, and she called me and asked me if I wanted to come over and spend the night. She really told me about that this time it was over. He had yelled at her because she was in the pool and she was topless in the pool or something, and he was, you know, yelled at her about that. And suddenly he was getting, you know, wanting her to cover up and be, you know, he was trying to control her again. And she realized that this was gonna be a really bad circle of, you know, going nowhere. Now, it was for good. I think he took that as a real rejection. And then he would have to lash out at her. She would lash out at him. It just became, uh, not good. But at the same time, she would never speak illy of him until the letter came. It was something to do with he had given her money that she had not declared on her taxes. And so he was coming after her, and he was going to turn her into the IRS. She was angry. She was angry that he would threaten her and the children and their ability to live happily. For her, yeah, OK, you can treat me like dirt. You can do it, but not our children. She was very good at hiding things that OJ did. I mean, she only really came clean with me after they were divorced. I just had too much information. And I knew he had a knife collection. I don't know if people know that. He was very into knives. And when we got married, my father was a lifer, Marine, and he had a ceremonial sword with him. And OJ was fascinated by that sword. He took a hold of that sword, swung him around, and took the sword like he was going to cut his neck. And it made me nervous because when they were married, there had once been a conversation while we were all out for dinner. And we were talking small talk. and. Somebody said, well, what are you afraid of? of? My fear, of course, was always, as a flight attendant, being in a fiery crash, you know, fire, dying in a fire. OJ's fear was drowning. Nicole said at that dinner, her, she had fears of being attacked from behind and being slashed by a knife. And go couple of years down the road when they were having very difficult time, we were sitting out on the beach. And she said, Deanne, you remember that conversation? She said, whenever we had these big fights, he would say to her, I am going to chop you up in little pieces and bury you up on Mulholland, and no one will know where you are not even your children.